Uh, no. Uh, in fact, that movie is so wonderful and I love it so much. So I was particularly sad when the scene, the scene that we, I, I introduced James Gandolfini and Julia's character mm. to each other mm. in it. And we were doing this big party shot and apparently we didn't get enough coverage correctly. And so the scene didn't edit together properly and so it got really, really cut down. Mm. And and this is why Nicole Hall Center is a hero. I love her, I'm a huge fan of all her movies. This has never happened with a director. She wrote me like an epic email about why the scene was not as written and why it was just gonna be a short thing in the final final and that she had tried every which way from Sunday mm. to get it edited. And she said, I'm gonna, I'm, we're gonna work together again. And you're always like, first of all, nobody writes that email. Directors don't write that email mm -hmm. when you get cut down. Secondly, they, nobody makes good on it. And she made so good on it no. with this movie. And so to answer your question about Julia and the sister relationship, we are both, she's an older sister, I'm a younger sister. She, I think she has some older sisters too, but, but she's very close with her younger sister. I'm really close with my older sisters. We both speak Nicole. I think that's why we're all here. And uh, it just was so natural, Matt. It was like so natural, you know, that uh, I would like to say it was hard and all the blood, sweat, and tears that go with making a movie, but this was so easy. It was like butter, <laughs> as yeah, they say. It was butter. just easy, breezy, and fun. And fun. Fun. So fun. I do think they have a healthy relationship. I've said this before, I think Michaela's character is the most put together of the four people. And I'm lucky to have her because she knows how to navigate Mark's massive insecurities. And I think that they really do love each other. I, that, what I love about the movie is that these, both of the couples feel like they're gonna be okay. Mm -hmm. I think that they're gonna work through all of their madness and their craziness and and um, it's sweet. It's just very, very sweet. Yeah, like like you said, I don't <clears throat> think it's melodramatic. I think it's so real, mm -hmm. so real, and and that it touches on something where the the betrayal is so awful because of the love that's there, not because of the love that isn't there. And that's a really fascinating way to come at a couple because mm -hmm. in a weird way, it's almost more devastating, right? And so, you know, I think Sarah, my character, just is the only one who, when she gets the affirmation from her, her work, she doesn't want it. She's mm -hmm. the only one who just doesn't want it. Yeah. She's like, I don't care. <laughs> like, I'm, this, this job makes me feel dead inside. Yeah, the sconce. To, I just want to get the, just whichever sconce yeah. you want, love. Whichever one you want, we'll put up. Here's a question. Can I ask a question on during yeah. your window? But uh, here's a question I always wanted to ask you. is like, when your character says, um, oh I just wanted to be famous, like, yeah. I don't want to do this anymore. Do you think it's true? The, oh, I th oh, that he said that? Yeah, I mean. Or do you think this is like, he's going to be out acting again tomorrow? Like, I think he's going to be out acting again tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. I think for certain That's folks, he's just... <laughs> It's just not gonna go away because it's always, you know. There's this phrase that we have: there, you're all one. We're all one audition away from making it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm sure he's like latching onto that. Thank you for yeah. indulging me, Matt. Oh yeah. What do you think? Oh, hold on, Matt. One second. Matt, take a break. Just take uh, a second. <laughs> what do you think? I think that in that moment, I'm like, okay, sure, honey, sweetie, whatever you say. No, like, I know, yeah. That's why they're great to each other. Yeah. That's why they're great for each other. That's the yeah. right thing. It's like, okay, fine, whatever. Yeah. Just let, let yourself say that. What do you think? I mean, <laughs> where does one begin? Um, I mean, I don't know about more or less, but I will say we are dealing, most of our job is a game of trying to deal with our insecurities and putting our insecurities out on blast in some sort of way to like really get some to some like cool little art. So, no, I think um, I think it's in the DNA. Yeah. I think it's in the DNA. You know, you know what I love about creative people and actors is we want to be so good at what we do that we become that we get validation, that we get noticed for how good we are. I think about like politicians. 
right now, especially in 2023. And I feel like there's this thing to be like famous and it doesn't matter how good you are. The goal is to get noticed and, you know, grab headlines and to be famous despite not being necessarily a good good at like passing policy. You mm-hmm, know what I mean? Mm-hmm, Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That that it's that it's not about being good at your job. It's in, it's a funny thing that has flipped. Because yeah, the content doesn't the matter content anymore. Content doesn't matter anymore. It's just the impression that yeah, it puts upon. Yeah, before you became a famous politician because you were able to move the needle for your, you know, country. But now it's like Everybody, they're all like grabbing the microphone and tweeting and blah, blah, blah. Whereas I feel like people who do what we do are just want to be so good at it and be noticed for that. Maybe I'm summarizing way too much, but I don't know. I just wanted more than just to be famous. Yeah, (laughs) he wants to be good. Yeah, he didn't want to be famous for the pumpkin movie. The pumpkin movie. Yeah. The pumpkin movie, it could have been a hit, could have been a hit, I don't know.